I think what we've done is talked about our general approach and uh, you know what I'm learning from you today is that it would be really great to have some prophylactic measures but let me make sure I understand then. You don't prophylax patients, you don't need to prophylax patients who have CM, CMV negative recipients. Is that right? Correct. Or, if they're CMV negative, negative and, and negative. negative. Both yeah. negative. Yeah. Negative into negative. Yeah. 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 But it's that's only actually one of them. Not that common. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. not common yeah. anymore. Not yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's move on then. So, but, okay, currently none of these agents are, uh, you know, no, I mean, available. I, the only thing I would comment on is that we, in, particularly in the cord blood, the, the, the use of valacyclovir at high dose is yes. thought perhaps to have some. There's uh, some effect. data. If they can tolerate uh, the yeah. high dose. I Which is, a, it's an enormous dose. It's, yes. Uh, yeah. So you go two grams three times yeah. a day. Uh -huh. and two grams three not times a day. Yeah. Area. Sometimes not well tolerated. <laughs> but there's some data showing maybe it's yeah. protect against mm -hmm. CMV. Yeah. Okay. But fortunately, Dr. Chamali, you have done some further work in this area with a, with a new antiviral agent that may be uh, potentially used in the future in prophylaxis. Do you want to tell us more about that? Yeah, actually, so we conducted a phase two trial uh, on Letermovir versus placebo and allogenic uh, transplant recipient tried to prevent uh, CMV uh, from reactivation. Uh, so uh, we enrolled around 131 patients uh, and uh, it was dose escalation study as well versus placebo and it uh, met the primary endpoint and prevented more around 50% of CMV reactivation when you compare to placebo and the highest dose which was 240 mm -hmm. milligram once a day. And they took it from, uh, uh, you know, any time before engraftment up to uh, uh, actually from time of engraftment up to day 100. So say week 12 to week 14, uh, they've been on the, on the study drug. And it worked very nicely. Uh, we didn't see any much of a safety signal from the drug. It was all SAEs or AEs were comparable to the placebo. There was no evidence of myelotoxicity or nephrotoxicity that we worry about in this patient uh, population or even liver toxicity based on this uh, phase two trial. So a randomized uh, phase two. It, it was, was randomized, randomized versus placebo controlled, yes. And the phase two uh, trial, uh, you know, this was back in 2014. And after that, because of this encouraging results and uh, the, the, you know, and, and, and the positive result, we went ahead and we moved uh, forward with the phase three trial. Uh, more than 500 uh, patients, I think it was around uh, 540, if I remember well, and, uh, and enrollment was completed. Uh, we have data, it was, it's publicly available now uh, through a press release where uh, it met the primary endpoint at week 24. What's interesting, what we, what we found is that you treat patients, or you put them on prophylaxis with the Turmovir versus placebo till week 14, and after, th after that you stop the study drug, and you continue monitoring them to week 24 and see how many will have reactivation over that time period. And it was much less on the Letermovir than on the placebo arm. So it met the primary endpoint and it was a positive trial, but still, you know, it's under analysis and hopefully you will hear now more in about the phase it two, it was about a 70% overall reduction in the risk of yeah. reactivation. What is that, is that holding in this? Uh, it, it's, you know, around between 50 and 70, I would say, uh, you know, it depends on the dose that you look at and also what we did in the phase two, if you remove actually all, so they had some patients who had early reactivation and they were enrolled in the, you know, in, in the study. And if you remove this patient who had already reactivated before you saw the study drug, actually it was 100% effective, the 240 milligram. And how, how early had they reactivated? It was pretty early, actually. It's what before even, uh, it's around day 20, I would yeah, say. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not sure we even begin screening until. Right. But now these days, actually, the practice is changing a little bit because of the sensitive PCR. So we start screening early sure. on, and we start seeing some yeah, reactivation that's true. even before engraftment. So, and, and when you stop the study drug, I, I, I'm sure you looked at what the reactivation rate was like after that, right? Yeah, it was also much less on the Letermovir oh, versus still the placebo until week 24. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah. uh, okay, but it brings up a, uh, uh, a drug approval question that I'm going to have because, you know, to me, what I've heard so far in terms of treating active CMV is you don't even know when to start your treatment, the drugs you have are toxic, but I think I heard you say very few people are dying a CMV well, well, we are anymore. treating you no know, our, our approach because we remember all those patients dying. We at my institution leap on a positive result, yes. and they are yes. hammered with the toxic uh, treatment. Absolutely, and this I, is the problem yeah. with the CMV viremia. It's not only about although any viremia, as I mentioned earlier, 
it put patient at disadvantage for the, the, the sheer cost Stint. of this yes. to, when when we have to add val, uh, valgancyclovir or gancyclovir to these patients transfusion goes up there, there, i mean everything just, just I, goes haywire i i know yeah. you're yeah. preaching to the cry, <laughs> choir i understand yeah. but at the end of the day yeah. okay how are we going to get this it sounds like a, a, a drug that patients need that clinicians need for their patients um, based on its toxicity profile and efficacy in terms of decreasing reactivation. And we understand when reactivation occurs how sick these people get, all of the cost utilizations, uh, oh yeah. but you didn't quite yet tell me that uh, we know that survival is worse. Well, so that comes so, down to the diagnostic so, so, test. So, yeah. Okay, but yeah. let me ask, so, is the endpoint going to be survival or is it going to be reactivation? So, so That's this trial, my question. Yeah, it was mainly reactivation. That Clinically one for the randomized phase, phase two. Right. For but the, in phase uh, for, no, three. Phase, even phase three. Oh. Actually, it was mainly, uh, you know, uh, failure of prophylaxis uh, or, or uh, the occurrence of clinically significant CMV viremia necessitating antiviral therapy. Well, that's good. So it wasn't survival, but secondary endpoint survival. So, yeah. and, but know, I mean, a, a, look surrogate at a validated, yeah. a validated uh, assay, yeah. a molecular yeah. assay, something we've longed for in and, our field. Oh, that's and, why and, we can't do it in AML. <laughs> that's why you we can't wrap your mind around that, this. That's right, I understand that you actually disease. have a validated assay. Yes. Okay, yeah. 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 well that's good for patients because that's the point I was trying to get to. You're preventing so many viremia and so many toxic drugs can be given to patients. You know, if we have a good safe oral drug that you can get to your patient during their high-risk period.